What's up guys, Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den located in Colmar, PA. If you're ever in the area, come check out the gym. We would love to have you. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to be specifically talking about how to increase your press and more importantly, how to program your press to get a lot of gains, okay? So kind of my background is that I've been a competitive strongman since 2017. I have a lot of awesome feats when it comes to pressing. I've put 425 over my head. I've pushed press 315 uh, for 10 reps. You know, I've done circus dumbbell at 200 pounds for eight total reps. Uh, and the press is just something that I really am passionate about. And specifically in the sport of strongman, uh, pressing is one of the big attributes that you need, especially if you want to be competitive. So I kind of got into it in 2017. My press was average, uh, but I slowly just started making improvements over time with technique and really programming. Uh, and I'm going to teach you guys that now on how you can implement it in your training and be an absolute beast. But I have guys who hire me at the professional level, uh, and then I coach them specifically when it comes to pressing. So there's a lot of knowledge and experience and a lot of trial and error, things that work, things that didn't work. But I kind of have a pretty solid system uh, on how this can benefit you guys, okay? So uh, first off, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, please follow me on Instagram. I have it right here. It's just Zastrank, same name as the channel. Uh, but I put a lot of tips, content, short formatted stuff uh, for you guys to get better. And I do a lot of pressing stuff on there as well. So, like we say, we're trying to blow the press up, okay? Especially if you're in strongman, you need this. If not, you just are somebody who has a goal of increasing that overhead press, get your pad and paper ready, take these notes, screenshot it, whatever, uh, and this is really gonna benefit you. So, cover the background. Uh, second thing I wanna talk about is frequency, okay? Frequency, what does that mean? It means how often are we training, pressing, or uh, just the movement that we need to to increase that press. Now, background once again on myself is I used to run pressing frequency of one time per week okay so I press let's just say on a Monday and then I wouldn't touch it till the next following Monday now if you're a beginner lifter that will work until it doesn't work okay and what I see a lot of people doing is they get stuck in that mindset of I'm just going to keep grinding it out things are going to happen but if it's been a couple months or a couple programming cycles and your press hasn't gone up or it's gone down we got to change things up so the first thing I like to play with is going to be frequency so if you are doing pressing one time per week, the next logical thing to do is increase it to two times per week. Now, if you're somebody who's already been dabbling with pressing twice per week, I've pressed up to three, even four times per week. Now, when I say that, that doesn't mean that I do full shoulder workouts three to four times per week. That means I take my total working volume and I spread it out throughout the week because I'm in a belief system that the more we practice something, the better we get as long as we are playing with things like volume uh, and intensity and managing systemic fatigue properly, it can be done. And the other thing too is shoulders being a little bit of a smaller muscle group, they can recover quickly. So if you press on a Monday, you probably will be ready by Wednesday or Friday to press again, and that's just gonna speed up uh, how much we can increase the press, okay? So big fan of increasing the frequency, so kind of figure out where you guys fit in that column, and then we'll go from there. We are gonna do a three day a week split here, uh, but if you guys just need to increase it to two, you can very well use the same principles that I'm talking about. And if we want to talk about a fourth day, I can add that in at the end. Uh, but like I said, volume and intensity are going to be the ways that we can structure that program so that we are making sure we're making gains. We're not overtraining or causing too much systemic fatigue uh, that we can't continue to push that frequency. All right. So very simple principle here. Uh, if I'm pressing three days per week, okay, I have day one, day two, and day three. And I'm gonna explain what I do on day one, why I do it this way, and then go through day two, and also for day three. So typically when I'm doing strength training or I'm involved with strongman, you know, kind of in the umbrella of strength training in general, I really like to only train four to five times per week. I feel like anecdotally from myself and the clients that I've worked with, when it comes to balancing the workload and recovery, we wanna make sure that we have a couple of days of recovery specifically for strength training. It's gonna be a higher intensity overall. We're gonna be moving a lot more weight. We're gonna be pushing that body's capabilities pretty far. So those rest days are gonna be crucial. Now, if you're bodybuilding, for example, you can probably train five to six days per week. Uh, usually I always recommend at least one day totally of rest, but with the difference between bodybuilding and strength training, you can get away with more frequency uh, and training sessions per week than strength training more often than not. Not to say you're not an outlier, not to say that you're a freak out there because freaks do exist. Uh, but for this case, let's just base it on a four to five day per week training split. So day one uh, is gonna be where we do our comp specific lift. What I mean by comp specific is the lift that we are gonna end up testing 
or that we're going to be doing in competition. So if you're in strongman, say you have a log clean and press pressing event, that is going to be what you focus on day one. Okay. Now, if you just want to do overhead press, like a strict barbell press, that is what you'll do on day one. So you can plug and play with your specific goals on what goes in for the comp lift. Now, the reason I like doing it this way versus flipping it and having variations and volume work in the front end of the week versus the back end of the week, and this is a question I got on my Discord channel. So if you guys aren't on the Discord, links down below, get on the Discord. Phenomenal community. I answer a ton of questions, and it's just going to make you a better person, better lifter. And it was a great question. So the reason I do this in the beginning of the week is because I just came off of two days typically of rest. So if I'm training, you know, Monday, Tuesday, then Thursday, Friday, I have a four day split. I have Saturday and Sunday to rest and I'm feeling really fresh. And for me, when I'm fresh, I want to work on what needs to be the most effort, most focus on that day of coming off that rest. So for me, it makes sense to put that competition lift. Typically, if we put it on the back end of the week, Right, we've done our variations, uh, we've pushed a good amount of volume, we don't have as much focus uh, on the main lift that we want to get better at. The rule of specificity is we have to work on X more to get better at X, okay? So when I do the competition lift, typically I'm wearing all gear, okay? So I'm taking my trend, my D-ball, my amp, no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm wearing my belt, my sleeves, anything that I'm going to be wearing in competition is how I want to practice, right? We practice how we play, the other thing typically is when we wear all that gear, we can push harder, okay? We can go more intense, we can put up more weight. Um, so with that, I wanna get a feel exactly how it's gonna be in competition, I wanna practice that skill, I wanna push myself as hard as I can on that variation. So that's day one, and that's important too, because that's gonna change as I talk through the other points. Now, as we transition over to day two, okay, so maybe this is going to be your Tuesday or your Thursday, if you're doing a Monday, Tuesday, right, Thursday, Friday split, we're going to do some sort of variation, okay, and typically with this variation is I like to work on a weak area of my lift or just finding a variation uh, that I know can increase my main lift. So, say I was doing a strict press here. Uh, and on day two, I really noticed that my lockout strength needs to be improved, right? I have a good drive from the start midway up, and that's where I tend to get stuck. Well, I'm going to probably throw in something like a pin press, maybe a chin level, nose level, forehead level, etc., cetera, uh, to get that volume working for those specific muscles that are going to help complement that lift. Um, the other thing you could do is like a push press, you could do a band press. Right? It's very customized to where your weak areas are and also things that you respond well with. But the main difference is that we're not doing the same lift again on day two because we already trained it in the beginning of the week and I'm also trying to regulate uh, my systemic fatigue. Now what I mean by that is if I'm just doing a pin press, it's a shorter range of motion, okay, it's not going to be as systemically taxing and I'll be able to uh, auto-regulate that fatigue as time goes on. So we have like a heavy day, kind of medium day, and then a lighter day in terms of systemic fatigue. And if you guys are training for the long haul, being able to structure and program your, your fatigue levels is huge. Okay, So I typically like to use RPE-based training. I put out videos short and long format on the channel. I'll link above here for you to dive into on why I like it and the pros and cons of using RPE and percentage base. Spoiler alert, the more I get into it, I actually use both, but RPE is primarily uh, my fatigue system or fatigue management system that I use, okay? So that's kind of how we set up day two. Now, one thing I do want to talk about is we're going to have either no or limited gear uh, for day two. So the reason being is I want to control fatigue level. So if I don't wear my elbow sleeves, if I don't wear my belt, I'm probably not going to be able to go as heavy and cause even more systemic fatigue. Now, the caveat with that is Say you're feeling pretty banged up, okay, you have elbow tendonitis, maybe some low back pain, etc. And when you put that belt on or you use those sleeves, it helps you be able to train. And I'm all for it in that regard, okay? So you have to figure that out for yourself. But if you're feeling really good, I prefer not a ton of gear or no gear on that day. And just have to use what you can to get through that training. So that's how I set that up. Uh, I do play a little bit with the reps and intensity that's going to be a little bit different than day one and at the end of this video i will put a little screenshot of something that you can kind of try uh, but i really recommend you guys getting a full program and, and having it all done for you so you don't have to waste too much time thinking about it or doing the wrong thing and kind of over fatiguing or not putting enough work in and not making progress so 
that's how we look for day two here. Now day three is gonna be our lightest systemic fatigue day, okay? And this is how we get our frequency of three days per week in. Um, and for this day, I like to do a little bit more volume work actually, but I'm controlling that with either a variation that isn't gonna be as fatiguing, um, or I'm gonna use something like dumbbells, right? I like doing dumbbell work. So maybe it's gonna be a seated dumbbell overhead press. Uh, maybe it's going to be some sort of isolation work or machine, if you have a machine, like we have a, a shoulder machine in here. So it's gonna just isolate those shoulders and not kind of increase the systemic fatigue that a log clean and press would or a standard barbell strict press would because our full body is kind of involved with that. So that's basically how I cover this, okay? And as you can see, we're working with higher fatigue here, medium, and then low. That's gonna be our auto regulation of the fatigue that we use. Every time I say fatigue, please take a shot. Um, but that's how I control it and I mitigate that be from becoming an issue, okay? So on that day three, like I said, you got dumbbells, um, you got cable work, you got isometric machines, you got just isolation exercises for the shoulders, uh, and also maybe working on smaller muscle groups. Maybe you, you find that your rear delts are a weak point in your press, so maybe you smash some rear delts there. Maybe you gotta hit some lateral raises or something like that. Um, not to say that you can't do another shoulder variation, but I would just be cautious not to make it something that's gonna be super fatiguing uh, and take away from your recovery because you're going into two days of rest that you wanna be able to come back and smash day one. So that's pretty much the gist of how I program for a lot of my lifts. And when I'm trying to dive specifically into one thing, this being the press for this example, uh, like I said, I'm a press specialist. This seems to work very well with the athletes in this format. And obviously there's different ways to skin a cat. I'm sure there are. I would love to hear how you guys program if you're trying to get better at a specific lift. I also would love for you guys to try this and just see what happens. Um, so down below guys, right now what you're seeing is basically a screenshot of just a way that you can you know, put this into your program using RPE-based training. Let me know how it works. Um, but as always, guys, if you like the video, subscribe, like it, uh, share it for other people to learn from. So basically, guys, to wrap this thing up, okay, hopefully you guys can give this a shot, see if it works for you. I do highly recommend getting on some sort of structured program. We have a ton down below that you can check out, whether it be the app or an a la carte. I also recommend you guys uh, get on our Discord. Okay, our Discord channel or server is great for the community that we have. I answer a ton of questions on there, and there's a lot of other things besides the strength training that you can benefit from to just make you the best person possible. Uh, and if you guys are in the area, we'd love for you guys to come and check out the gym. So that's all I have, guys. Kind of short in the middle of a duration here, but I think there's a ton of value. So check it out, and let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. As always, guys, stay a lean, mean strength machine. Catch up with you guys next time. Peace.